Okay, folks, welcome to Dwarf Fortress. This is version 0.44.08, which is the latest one, which means it is a release to correct or fix some bugs, which means it could also have some bugs. But I'm going to play it. I have already made a world, since that is probably the most difficult and longest process of the game next to maybe making soap but maybe that's just me so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, pick a place to embark make some people and then we will embark that'll be the first episode that in itself will take a while I will only explain things when I feel it's necessary um, some of my decisions are probably not decisions you would make if you played the game I am not an expert. Do not do this at home. Well, you probably could play this game at home if you want, but many of the decisions I make are probably not decisions you would want to make. Also, I make some decisions just to experiment, just to test out things. So, like I said, your mileage will differ than mine because of my decisions. So, we've already created a world. <clears throat> That's the name of the world. In English, I think it means uh, foreseen planets or something like that. I forgot. Okay, folks, welcome to the ever seen planets. And no, we're really, 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 uh, I think we're really close. Let's uh, pull back so we can see the whole map. This is a region, this is the world. And this is where the, the little blinking crosses. Let's zoom back in for purposes of finding an embark point. Now, what I'm going to do is tell it to find an area where there's trees, where it's probably a, a little tropical. Temperate means things will freeze up, and I prefer to have a river that doesn't freeze up. Uh, there are advantages to having a river that freezes up, because you can actually dig around it when it's frozen which does help in certain projects I find that while that is advantage it's not too much of an advantage I also would try to stay away from aquifers if I could but I might not get a choice so uh, I'm gonna do a search I'm gonna tell it what I want to be searched uh, <coughs> Basically, we're going to use the uh, find desired location down here. And I'll be back when I find something that looks uh, like it's acceptable. Um, and uh, I'll see you then. Another another edit cut coming up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dwarf Fortress has taken what I wanted and found one area. A tropical region scorching temperature I don't think I've ever actually um, I don't think I've ever actually uh, uh, populated a scorching area woodland moderate vegetation wilderness there's a stream there which is good has shallow clay very deep soil which is eh, an aquifer which could be a problem shallow metal deep metals and flux stone which is good for making metal working now the problem with that is that uh, aquifer is blocking me from doing that aquifer is water going through a, a stone that allows it like little holes it's very dangerous to mine through and I'm not very good at it uh, I wouldn't mind this except for the fact I'm not too sure about scorching and on top of that, I'm not too sure. Is the aquifer completely covering everything? Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty much covering everything. Right. Uh, well, let's see. Um, is there anything close by? There's dwarves and goblins.
Huh. Pretty flat, basically. Cliffs. That's water, isn't it? I don't like this. Um, this would be great if I was in an island. Uh, the reason for that is if I can't get metals, at least I could be isolated from armies. But if I do this, I'm going to have to trade for metal or bring some metal. Or bring armor. Just bring armor with me to begin with. And it's going to make it difficult to survive. Um, I'm not saying this game's easy to begin with, but I don't want to make it even more difficult on myself. So what I'm going to do now, folks, is I'm um, going to cut, and I'm going to look. I'm going to look for areas. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I asked it not to have aqu uh, uh, aquifer. Well, let me search. Let me search. If I could find an island, that would be cool. So let me just search around, guys. Okay, folks, I have found an island, which actually looks like a true island. Um, heavily forested, thick, calm, soil, uh, clay. It has metals aquifer, but it, it, it's a, a temperate forest. Um, the problem is it doesn't have a stream or anything like that. <clears throat> it's going to be an issue because we're not going to be able to get water. Unless I do some engineering with uh, pipes and uh, stuff like that. So let me check someplace else. Okay. Forest of Adventures. Warm. Heavily forested. Thick. Shallow clay. Very deep water. I do have a brook. Which is always nice. Might want to change it a little bit there. Oh. So I would between, oh, that's not, that's interesting. That's a beach. And that would um, make it, see that water and that sand? Yeah. That's interesting. That would make it actually kind of hard. That's actually pretty cool. I could fish. So I have a warm, heavily forested. Uh, it's not going to have fruit, though. That's okay. That might be, that's fresh water, wood. Not going to get metals, but I will have clay, soil. Let's check the uh, bio. It's all the same bio. Oh, yeah, because that's water. Okay, uh, let's check out surrounding. Neighbors are dwarves, no goblins, right like that. That sounds like a good one. Um, let us embark. Let's see what warning we get on embark. Area with salt water. It might be very difficult to survive here. Yes, but I have a brook. I'm not going to go near the aquifer. Don't worry. Let's embark. And I'll be right back once I've done selecting things and setting up stuff. It's going to be slightly different than you're used to, probably. Um, certain things, like miners, usually you take two. I don't need two. And also, I'm probably going to take two woodcutters or tree killers or whatever you want to call them. But uh, the thing is, cutting down trees doesn't really need much skill. You're just cutting down the tree. But being a carpenter, that's a skill. That you might need because you're going to be dealing with a lot of wood. So uh, my woodcutters might not have any skill in woodcutting. But I have skill in other things. Just like my miner will probably have some skill in mining. Because I want him to do it quickly. We're not going to do a lot of it. But I want to be underground with some of the supplies and stuff. This is probably going to be an above ground civilization guys. My dwarves will not like that. They'll have to suck it up. But they're all probably going to have some sort of weapon skill. I'm probably going to make sure there's an appraiser. Somebody who could do uh, medical 
stuff like that. But a lot of these skills will probably be activated after we embark because a lot of these skills are, are on the job skills like the herbalist. I'm not even sure we're going to find fruit. We might just find pine cones. So if we get there and there's no fruit, it doesn't matter. If we do find fruit, then we'll make a chair, uh, not chair, we'll make a ladder so he can climb up to the trees and he won't need to have skills for it. He could easily, you know, upgrade his skills on with on the job training. So I'll get back to you when this is all done. Okay, folks, I have selected the skills, given the uh, dwarf, dwarfs their professional names, except for SM06 there. He's got so many things in his skills that he's, I'll let him decide what he's going to be called. But Stone Guy obviously does with stone stuff. Tree Killers obviously cut down trees and deal with tree stuff. Cookie is a cook who also uh, does the growing. Booze Hound is the brewer who also does the growing. And Gopher is kind of a combination of little things that will allow him to be the broker, uh, probably the mayor in the long run, the manager, stuff like that. Social skills, I think we would call them in the role-playing game. I also have gone through uh, Copper Pick, stuff like that. Sadly, none of those dwarves have any military skills. Um, I just didn't have the points to do everything I wanted. And I had to give them some skills in certain areas, whether I liked it or not. Also, uh, I got three axes, two picks, an iron anvil. Kind of useless. I probably could have sold that for points. The thing is, sooner or later, we're going to get some medals, and we're going to have people who want to work metal. You know what? Let me delete that, because once again, it's actually not going to be very useful for us at the beginning. So let me delete that and see what I could do. Be right back. Okay, folks, I'm back. I have dumped the uh, iron anvil. Once again, might need it, might, probably won't, because I can't get to the ore. So I'm going to probably do a lot more trade. Um, now, I could take the iron anvil, make a work, uh, an actual metalsmith, take a lot of car, coal and er, ores on my own, and make cheaper metals, make cheaper weapons and all that. But to be honest, I want to have weapons when I get there. So what I have is a short sword and four war hammers. Um, when you take into account the axes could also be used as weapons, though we'll have that's uh, three axes, two of them will be used by woodcutters. That's a total of six weapons, seven people, two pickaxes, and a pickaxe can be used as a weapon too, so that's seven weapons. Uh, armor will be done by the, um, well, you see, we have a lot of food, a lot of uh, seeds, but also we are taking uh, two dogs, two, four dogs, two male, two female, two hens, two roosters, and two turkey hens and two gobblers. Now, usually I like to take pigs because pigs are really nice meat animal, but um, I can't afford them with the points and I don't want to screw this up any more than I have to. Turkeys are good because they give you meat and leather. Uh, so when we get there, we'll start breeding our turkeys to give us leather armor, leather gauntlets, and all that. Fish bring in a lot of shells. Uh, animals, when we kill them, bring in a lot of bones. So you can make shell and bone armor. Wood shields will also... These guys are going to look like stuffing out of a Native American tribe than anything else. Especially because they have copper weapons, which is obviously... Now, chickens... Uh, are meat and egg producers much they produce they become adults much faster than turkeys but they don't give us leather and the dogs guard dogs hunting dogs war dogs and uh, as her point if they become too many we eat them so I pretty sure this is good uh, I'm gonna save this I've already saved once before and I'm gonna save it again so overwrite because I took the anvil out and put the weapons in this is definitely not going to be a regular Dwarf Fortress metal-centered kind of uh, thing. And you can see I got a lot of meat. Uh, I don't know what my Dwarves like, so I'm going to try to make sure they get at least some meat they like before things go downhill. And I got a bucket. No, th these are uh, barrels, actually. 
of every milk available. Uh, that's something I do because there's only one unit of milk in there so they're going to make in the cheese and then they're going to stuff the cheese into one barrel and the rest of the barrels are available. You can never have too many barrels. Some people also get a bag of everything. <clears throat> one bag of this sand, one bag of that sand, one bag of this, one bag of that. Um, so we're going to embark and start our journey. You have arrived. After a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidden wilderness beyond, your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven ha is to make an outpost for the glory of all Astrobam? Astror Bam? Yeah. There's there are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes substance. Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply cavern just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the wolves get hungry. Oh, there's wolves. Good. I, I like eating wolves. The new chapter of dwarven history begins here at this place. Ryko, yeah, whatever. Craft Riddle. Now, Craft Riddle is the name I allowed the dwarves to pick. I gave them their own name of their own group, which we'll probably show you later on. Strike the Earth. Now, let's get that out of the way. There you go. Pause. All right. Now, first thing you do, before you look at anything, Z, animals. So we got the stray dogs, the roosters, the turkeys, and two water buffalo, both of which are female. Great. I can milk them. And it, no, those are male. God damn it. That sucks. Well, if I could get a water buffalo in the future who's female, that will work for me. So I want to keep those guys alive, though I can't really do anything with them. And since they're on the surface, and everybody else could go underground, that is annoying in a way if this was a regular door fortress. But since I'm going to be above ground most of the time, it doesn't really matter. Now let's go to kitchen. This is the first thing you should ever do. Pump helmets. Cook. No. You could brew them, and you can eat them raw. You'll get spawn from that. That's seeds. Cook them, you destroy the seeds. Okay. Cave weed seeds, don't cook. Spawn, don't cook. Okay. Uh, dimple cup spawn is for making dye. I probably should have taken that out, but who knows. So I'm going to have probably small, small farms to begin with. I'd like to more spawn, but mm. drinks do not cook with any of your drinks. You want to drink them. And I brought a lot. Yes, good. Okay. There is a lot of food here. And some of this milk I don't want to cook because I want to make it into uh, cheese. But I'll leave the rest of the milk. I'm not sure how they're going to cook milk, but I'll leave the rest of that there. And they got brains and turtle ponds and all that stuff. Pond turtles. So that's good. Stone. We don't have any stone stocks. We don't have a lot of stuff. And we don't really know the numbers because we don't have a manager or a bookkeeper or anything. We have one bucket. We're going to need more buckets. So, guys, let me uh, cycle out if I could. Okay. There's the brook. Oh, and there is... Our, our little oceanfront property, which means fishing. So we have seawater fishing over here. We have fresh water and regular fishing over here. How deep is it? It's, it's nice. A lot of trees around it. We have a lot of trees, too. Let's see what the trees are. Pears. Pecan. You can eat pecans. Bayberry, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about these. I don't know. Let's, let's go up in the air. So, yeah. So, uh, we're doing uh, 
we're doing okay. We got some fruit trees. We got some regular trees that we could probably cut down just for the purpose of building. This is going to be above ground fort. Um, it is, let me get out of that. It is early spring, 15 of granite, which is the first month, the first month of the year, basically uh, January, mid-January. And it is the year 250. Um, it is still the age of myth. And uh, let me show you uh, our name, if I could get to one of the dwarves. Nope. That, that. And let's, let me show you. See, so M, single male, 03. He's the third person of the first wave. He's a tree killer, which means he deals with trees. And let me get into his skills here. Not his skills, but his uh, personality. So, look at that. So, he is a member of the Labyrinthian Brilliance of Waves. I figured we're near the sea. That'd be it. So, he is born on the 4th of Granite, which means it was his birthday, actually. Uh, he just turned uh, 84 uh, in this month. Uh, ears are very flattened. He has very long sideburns, which are neatly combed. His very long mustache is arranged in double braids. His medium length beard is braided. His hair is clean shaven. So he's bald. Deliberately, he shaved his head. He has a high voice. Brown skin is wrinkled. His nose bridge is slightly concave. Yep. His slant gray eyes are slightly rounded. His nose is slightly upturned. His hair is auburn with a touch of gray because he's, he's old. He's really slow to heal. That's okay. He's a tree cutter. He, he's poor empathy. He's not very good with social uh, relationships. Uh, he, he, he has no natural musical ability. That's okay. He's a tree cutter. Yeah. He's not going to do much except tree. Now, he dreams of crafting a master work someday. That's also okay because he's also a woodcrafter. So sooner or later, he's probably going to be one of the guys who makes our cups. Or, and I'm expecting this to be our major export, wooden toys. The elves will not like that. But, hopefully, everybody else does. So, and you're going to ask us, why did I give them those weird names? Not, I don't mean the person... The profession, you know, kill tree or what obvious he's going to kill trees. But SM03, I will get into that when we get into the military. But right now, guys, I think this is a good way to stop the episode. A uh, good place to stop the episode. And uh, I'm going to have to go edit and uh, make sure it makes sense. 